new paddle board and it's just started snowing. First things first, let's have a look at what comes with in the box. So that bad boy came in this box. As you can see, that's the size where everything folds down into. But it was snowing at the time of me unboxing and inflating, so I, uh, I've spared you that. But this is the bag that it comes in uh, for transport. It's actually really quite a nice bag for a couple of reasons. It's got wheels on the bottom, which I appreciate. And fully unfolds like so, so it's an absolute doddle to put it back into. But only the true nerds will appreciate this. The zips are YKK zips. The best zips. The Gucci of zips. So yeah, really good. Nice front pouch as well for putting the likes of your pump in or whatever, filming equipment, whatever you want to do. So the pump itself then, this is it here. It's quite a sizable beast and you need to take that into account. The base just unscrews, as do the handles. Uh, but you'll notice different to certainly other pumps that I've had, it's got dual chamber, three settings, high pressure, maximum pressure, and I think low pressure. Uh, basically, from what I can understand, and I haven't read anything on this, it uses one chamber, both chambers, or both chambers on the up and down. I just pumped that up manually and it was an absolute doddle. Although I do recommend you get an electric 12 volt or battery operated pump. The fins themselves, as you can see, really quite high quality. What I'll notice about these is they're really thick, they don't flex. On some other paddle boards, and I've been very lucky to date, I've only ever used really good paddle boards, I'll be honest, but these are definitely thicker. And as you can see, there's a few marks on it because I've already done a couple of beach landings, etc. Solid. But the rear middle fin, the screw down connection where you've got to put the, the nut underneath and yeah, I'm still not a fan of those. Let's get onto the paddle then. This is the paddle. It is carbon fiber. Really nice. Now when it comes to paddle boards, you tend to find that they're either aluminium, like a fiberglass or some sort of glass or carbon fiber. And it's got a really wide paddle, which is good for uh, thrust, but also stability in the water. I'll talk about that on my safety tips. What's the crack with having a carbon paddle? Is it actually useful or is it just fashionable? To be honest, it's stiffer and lighter. So I find personally, it's a bit more responsive in the water, but not the end of the world, but very, very light. I like this, really nice. So the leash is really high quality, it's thick, Pretty standard really to be honest but you know you can just tell it's good quality even the strap the securing strap don't go out of that leash like i say it's snowed it's rained now it's sunny i don't know what to expect next welcome to britain welcome to the island in winter <laughs> now you've seen what's in the box let's have a look at the actual board itself inflated 10 foot 8 carbon fully inflated so off the bat it's a beautiful color actually i don't know if it comes in other color schemes probably but the one thing that separates this from my other paddle boards is that it's got carbon fibre rails within it to increase stiffness. I don't know what that transfers to, we'll find out today, I'll have a quick skeet. Uh, this is a first look, I'll do a proper review once I've used it a little bit more. Also, it's got two inflation chambers, so it's got one on the outside and another one through the middle. They say that adds stiffness and also a little bit of added security. Probably does to be fair, hope so. Comes with these nice sort of like sort of like nylon handles. There's three in the middle, one on the front, one on the rear. Rather large sort of diamond. They call it a crocodile grip. It does look a little bit crocodile, doesn't it? It's not made out of crocodile for any of you Greenpeace activists. But yeah, it's really long. It goes across the whole board. And one thing I've never seen before, which is really quite useful, is it's got this like sort of elevated bit at the rear for kickback. So forever, if you need to get to the back of the board to turn it quickly, which we do. You don't have to look at your feet, really useful. Uh, you can see where the leash attaches to the rear, quite useful. You can also attach it to the D-ring, whatever you fancy. Uh, one thing I do like about the cargo straps front and rear on this paddleboard is that they've got these additional side connections, which are really stiff. So really good to tie stuff off to, and also a nice little snap hook. Yep, pretty good. Just coming to the front here. Also, action camera mount. You can mount action cameras screw them straight into there and there's also two at the sides and the rears here should you want to use them in the world we live in a lot of people video stuff as they go on but other than that that's pretty much it they say it's got some industry leading drop stitch technology which makes it super stiff and extra durable i am by no means gentle with my equipment 
coming off on beaches, wild camping, etc. But they say it's really robust. It's quite a there's quite a pointy end to this one. Some of them are rounded, it's quite wide in the middle. It is a cruise board, so that will help you cut through the water a bit better. I don't know how that affects stability. We'll have to try it out. But there we go, guys. I'm keen to get in before it thunderstorms or something strange. Tip number one, wear your leash. I've been hit by a couple of rogue waves in the past, been separated from the board. I was guilty of never wearing the leash. <laughs> Honestly, I was terrible for it. But you should always wear the leash that goes around your ankle. This board is your best flotation device. Honestly, um, you get separated from this, you're relying on this, which is a PFD, a personal flotation device, which is the second tip. I recommend wearing one of these. If you're wearing a wetsuit, you'll have some buoyancy there. Now, Weather conditions, everyone talks about weather, but no one really gives you specifics. If there is an offshore breeze, so say the breeze right now was blowing me out to sea, I wouldn't be out paddle boarding. Even if it was like 10 miles an hour wind, it's just not worth it. Always go with an onshore wind, even cross shore, because these things are so light, honestly, when you're out paddle boarding, you're like a little sail. If you do get caught out and the weather changes, just do what I'm doing now, get low and then paddle on your knees, you'll get back. Top tip, check the weather on like a free app like Windy. You can check the weather direction uh, throughout the day and it's normally pretty accurate to be honest. Don't try and stand up on your paddleboard until you're probably at least head height in water. Most injuries on paddleboards occur with people falling in. Uh, and don't be afraid to fall in, it's quite normal. But uh, if you fall in in like three foot deep water and you go head first, you get the message, it's gonna hurt. So get out to a little bit of deeper water before you try standing up. And uh, as a general rule of thumb, you'll see where the handles are on the board, in the middle. That's a good place for your foot placement. If there's any sort of waves coming your way from a boat that goes past, try and steer into them. You want the front of the paddleboard to ride over those waves. I had a little bit of a wobble earlier on where I got caught with a side wave. It was next to nothing, but I just didn't have my feet in the right place. Bring a mobile phone with you. This paddleboard and many others come with a little waterproof pouch. Just strap it to the front. You've seen it on probably saving lives at sea. The amount of people that have called RNLI from a paddleboard saying, I've been blown out to sea or whatever. You can't always rely on having a good phone signal. Uh, I mean, the gold standard is to have a VHF radio, but I appreciate not most people will have them. But hey, bring a phone with you. Let people know where you're going. Don't look at your feet when you're trying to stand up on a paddleboard. You might think that's the right thing to do, but it's just going to make you fall in. Look forward, pick something stationary and look at it. Uh, you'll just be a bit more natural. And also, I've said this before, but as far as uh, if you become unstable when you stand up, stick the paddle in the water, hold it there. It acts like a little bit of an anchor. It's really quite useful. So guys, a quick first thoughts impression from uh, obviously going out. It works well in snow. <laughs> no, but serious stiffness wise, I, I, it's hard for me to tell if it's any stiffer than other boards yet. I'll uh, do a bit more on it. It felt it felt solid, don't get me wrong, and it is solid. It's a little bit heavier than other boards, so if you're a bit on the lighter side, bear that one in mind. Uh, but for me, specifically, I'm really looking forward to using it. I'll load it up with a little bit of weight, a few dry bags, which is how I would normally use one, and see how it is then. But yeah, really quite buzzing with it. It's a beautiful looking paddleboard, and I've no problem sticking a dog on the front of that. Stand by for paddleboard adventures in 2023, whether I use it from the boat, wild camping adventures, We'll see, but you'll see plenty more of these on the channel. I do like paddleboarding, it is a great sport. But I'm going to get out of here before it starts hailing or whatever. You can always count that whatever I say is unbiased. I won't do any reviews or first looks or product reviews if the manufacturer ever tries to tell me what to say. Have a good week. Stand by for the next video.